How's it going friends? Reckless Yuki here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic and welcome to my long awaited video where I'm gonna let you guys know out of all the mice that I currently own and use, which is the best for FPS gaming. And about four months ago, I purchased all these mice based on what the top CSGO players use, as well as some recommendations from other YouTubers on what they feel is the best FPS gaming mouse. Now, this video is gonna break down these mice into three categories. It's going to be comfort, weight, and performance. And I feel those are sufficient to kind of figure out which one is the creme de la creme or the best of the best or whatever you want to say when you're trying to say which is the best over the others. And hopefully you guys enjoy this. Now, if you're curious on any individual review, I'll have them linked in the description below. But this video is definitely going to let you guys know which is, in my opinion, is the best. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy. So before we get into it, I'm going to let you guys know where I'm coming from and why I'm doing this and then the competition as far as all the mice I'll be testing in this video. Now, when I got back into PC gaming back in the fall of 2014, I went on Google trying to find a guide on what is the best FPS gaming mouse. And the guide that ultimately followed was a Tom's Hardware, and Tom's Hardware told me that the M65 from Corsair is the best FPS gaming mouse. Now, I went on to that suggestion and bought this and bought a Corsair K70, which the Corsair K70 I love, but the M65 I didn't. This just never clicked and it never felt right. I thought it was due to my only competence of why I was never able to aim on the PC, and I just kept trying for months until I finally gave up and decided to try another mouse. That led me to the G502 from Logitech, which this was a godsend. I absolutely love this mouse and I still love this mouse. I think it's a fantastic mouse. And based on this, of how much of an improvement this was, I went on a recommendation of what other YouTubers were kind of saying as far as the best gaming mouse that they use, and that was the Myonex Caster. And I found this on Mass Drop at a cheap price and I was trying to play with this, like messing around with it, but it just never felt perfect for me. And you know, it had some nice features, but I felt that the G502 is better. So then that got me thinking, what is the best FPS gaming mouse out there? So what I did was I went to forums and tried to figure out what the top CSGO players use and what they recommend, or at least just basically the things, the equipment that they use, figuring that should be the best for accuracy and performance. And I bought all of them, at least all the popular ones that I've seen multiple times from the top players. And then that led me into the uh, Steel Series Rival 300, the Logitech G502, the Razer Death Adder Chroma, the Final Mouse 2016 Tournament Pro, Final Mouse 2016 Ergo Classic, the Monix Caster, the Zoe FK1, and then the Logitech G303. So these are the mouse that I'll be using in this video. So let me know what you think, if there's any other mice that you might want in the future. And also, I'm not going to be done with this yet. Uh, this is basically just the beginning. Um, as new mice come out that I'm really interested in, like I know that there's some new mice coming out from Final Mouse I'll definitely check out. I'll be purchasing them and then also doing reviews. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to check out other videos in the future. So let's get into the first category now, which is comfort. And comfort to me is the least important of the three when you're comparing comfort, weight, and performance when you're trying to choose a mouse for competitive first-person shooter gaming. Now, if you're just a casual player, comfort plays a larger role, but for competitive play, the performance and the weight of the mouse, I think are far more important. I'll get into that in those sections of the video. Now, as far as comfort, comfort is very subjective to the individual. What I find comfortable might not be what you find comfortable. Now, it really comes down to your hand size, which my hands are a size large. I wear a size large motorcycle glove. And also your grip style. I have a basically a hybrid palm claw grip that I feel is the best for me. Now, if you use a fingertip grip, or if you're just a full claw or full palm, you know, your opinions might vary. Now, as far as the mice, I kind of broke them down into five categories as far as which is my favorite and best due to only one mice being in there, uh, what's adequate, what develops kind of sore spots, what I feel is too small, and then what just develops cramps. So we'll get into that. As far as my most favorite mouse for holding and gaming with is the SteelSeries Rival 300. This mouse is freaking huge and it's perfect for my large hands. I feel I could just stretch out and grip this thing and you know, it just fits my palms perfectly. I absolutely love using this mouse. Uh, it's one of my favorite mice to use, but it's just not the best competitive mouse. So we'll kind of get into that later. But anyways, for comfort, this sir does win as far as the comfort level, and it is the most comfortable for me. Now, the next group of mice is basically mice that I feel are adequate, where they're not, you know, too small. They're, they're a little bit on the small side for me just because of my hand size. I think they're made for more average users out there but I feel that they are adequate where I de I never developed a sore spot using them. They just fit perfectly for the most part, just a, just a little bit on the small side. And so that was the Logitech G502, the Death Adder Chroma, and also the Final Mouse 2016 Tournament Pro. 
the shape and size of the valves, you know, just a little bit on the small size, but for the most part, they were perfect in my hand. I just had to kind of claw up my hand a little bit more than I would if I was using this Dual Series 300. So that's the next grouping where I think is, you know, adequate for most users. Now, the next two mice I'm gonna share with you guys are mice that kind of develop sore spots, and that's gonna be the Final Mouse 2016 Ergo Classic and the Myonix Caster. Now, both of these mice are kind of uncomfortable, mainly because the fact that on the pinky side here, there's this little ridge that just dig into my ring and pinky when I try to hold it in a claw type fashion. Because I have to hold these mice in a claw due to their size being a little bit smaller, when I hold it, I basically grip it pretty hard with my pinky and my ring finger to the point where this little ridge just kind of digs into it. And I never, after about a little while, it just kind of develops a sore where I don't really enjoy using it that long. And definitely the Milex Caster is the same way. It has this sharp ridge right here on the side next to the right click. And then here there's an additional ridge right here where it just kind of hits my pinky. So this first ridge kind of upsets my ring finger. The second ridge upsets my, upsets my pinky. And, and you know, like a lot of people find this mouse to be the most attractive for them. But for me, I think just because it's a little bit smaller, it makes it uncomfortable in my hands, specifically because I have large hands. So if you have large hands, don't go on the recommendations that this is the most comfortable mouse because the people who say this is the most comfortable probably have smaller hands. So if you have smaller hands, maybe your opinions of this mouse will be different, but keep that in mind. I don't really like mice that have these little things on the side because I feel them to just kind of be uncomfortable spots for me to hold. Now the next mouse, the Zoe FK1 is kind of built for larger people, but this mouse is just a little bit too small for my hands. I don't really like it. The profile of the mouse, the height is very slim. So I think that's one of the reasons why I don't like it. Even though this is larger than the FK2, like the FK2 was built for smaller hands than this. Um, this was built for like kind of, I guess, larger hands. But for me, it's just, it just never felt right. Like I felt that the other mice that I have are far more comfortable than this. And then lastly, the Logitech G303. I was recommended this mouse because basically it's like a G502, has the same sensor, which is absolutely amazing. But this mouse is just freakishly small. I mean, look at this, this is just like a little diamond. And this mouse, after about an hour, and like an hour, hour and a half, it causes my hand to cramp as I hold this little ass mouse trying to game. Now the performance of this mouse is just, you know, it's fantastic. I loved using this mouse except when my hand started cramping. Once that hit, like I absolutely despise using this mouse and I just couldn't use it anymore. So this is definitely not for the person with large hands. Now, if you have small hands, this might actually be really good for you, but for large hands, it's definitely not. So that is my opinions on all these mice as far as comfort. All right, so now let's get into the next subject, which is weight. And my opinions on the weight of a mouse has changed over the years. And it really developed over the last four months when I'd been testing all these mice. And at first I thought I wanted the heavier mouse. I felt the heavier mouse was easier to control. But as I was testing all these mice, I realized that that's not the best for first person shooters. When you're trying to aim well and kind of aim fast, you want a really lightweight mouse. And the reason for that is a lighter mouse will have less inertia. And inertia is basically going to create force where you're going to have to generate force to get a mouse to move from a standing state up to a moving state. And then that will require more force. And then once it starts going due to a heavier mouse having more momentum, more mass, uh, it will require more force to kind of get it to stop. So you might not be able to aim correctly or aim as fast as you would if you had a lighter mouse versus a heavier mouse. And so that's basically my new opinions on the mouse is I feel that the lighter mouse is better for first person shooter gaming. Now, your opinions might be different. You might still like a heavier mouse because you like the feel of it. You like how it feels more solid. But for me, I also felt that, but really, I've adapted to where I really value a really lightweight mouse. And that's what I think is most important when it comes to the weight of the mouse is that you need the lightest possible to a certain degree. Uh, I mean, like if it's really light where they sacrifice in build quality, then yes, I can understand that you want a little bit more heft to make sure it just doesn't break in your hands. But out of all the mice that I have, none of them felt that it was gonna break in my hands, even though some of them did feel kind of cheap. But anyways, the lightest mouse out of all of them was the final mouse 2016 Tournament Pro, even though it wasn't the lightest mouse advertised. And when I did this test, I looked at all the advertised weights, and then I compared them to the actual gaming weight, which where I used a scale, basically this scale right here, 
to weigh each mouse with one foot a cord because I figure that that would be an adequate a representation of how much drag you're gonna have and how much weight you're actually gonna be using with a mouse because a lot of these advertised weights were the weight of the mouse without the cord. I felt that was just not true. So the weights I'm gonna show you on the screen now are the weights of the mice with a gaming weight. And the way that I did this was I basically used a scale and put the mouse on the scale and then I used a cord holder to hold one foot a cord with the mouse and then weighed it that way to determine the actual way of the mouse. And the lightest mouse out of all of them was the Final Mouse 2016 Tournament Pro. And it does feel like the lightest. Whenever I use it and move around, it just feels so light where I can like feel like I whip it around and control it more so than some of the heavier mouse like the G502. The G502 I feel is a tad bit too much on the heavy side. But anyways, as far as for the weight category, the lightest is definitely the Final Mouse Tournament Pro or uh, Final Mouse 2016 Tournament Pro. So that's it for the weight category. All right, so now finally moving on to the last category, which is performance, the performance level of the mouse. And how the hell do you test this? So one of the things that I was really kind of concerned with was how was I going to test this? And one of the things I noticed while I was testing all these mice is that some of them felt a little bit laggier than the others, where some of them felt that it was really crisp and really quick whenever I moved the mouse. I felt that my character in the game was you know, moving along right with me. Where some of the mice, when I was moving it around and kind of testing it, it didn't feel as good as some of the others. And as I did that more and more over the last four months, I kind of was jumping around the mice a lot until I kind of hoed in on which mice I felt was better than the others and what mice I really didn't like using when I was playing competitive games. But for me to sit here and just tell you based on that, I feel wasn't very adequate where I could be influenced based on outside influences, based on what other people say where, you know, if I heard a review or read a review from some person saying that this is the best, well, how will I know that that's the best? And if I say otherwise, how can I prove that that's not the best in my personal opinion based on, you know, just saying like, yeah, I didn't really like that mouse very much. So what I did was I found a program from a company from Taiwan called Bloody, and I guess they make gaming peripherals and they have some pretty neat stuff which I'm gonna be testing in the future. But they had a program where basically you use a USB hub to connect to a single USB port in your PC. And then you use the two mice that you're looking to compare and plug it into the USB hub. And then you take your mice and basically with the program open, you're like smashing your mice together <laughs> like this. And like you're smashing the right click of one versus the left click of the other when they're plugged into this USB port and it will measure the latency between the two mice. So I felt that might be actually a good test to kind of compare these mice as far as which one's gonna be the fastest as far as click latency. And then I thought that that might could also relate into how it registers when it comes to the sensor because when the computer basically registers your clicks, I think it also does the same thing when it registers you moving around the mouse. So whichever mouse had the lowest click latency would also have the lowest input latency when it came to moving. And it was actually surprising of what I found out with this test. And I know that some of you are gonna be very skeptical about this test and tell me that I'm stupid for using this. Uh, for anyone out there that thinks I should have used a high speed camera when moving a mouse and compared to a, you know, 144 hertz monitor or a 60 hertz monitor, that is actually not the best test, all right? Because there's a certain level of error in that. Basically, when you're moving a mouse and you're using a high-speed camera, let's just say 60 frames per second you're using to move a mouse to see how long it takes for the monitor to also move, that is only accurate up to 16.67 milliseconds, which a lot of these mice, basically all these mice fall under that. And if I was to use a high speed camera that can record up to 144 Hertz, which will match 144 Hertz of my current gaming monitor, that would only be accurate up to 6.94 milliseconds, which some of these mice are below that as well. So how do you find accuracy below 6.94 milliseconds? If you don't understand the math behind that, basically take one frame divided by how many frames per second, multiply by a thousand, that's how you find the how many milliseconds are in each frame of your monitor. Just, you know, pro tip right there. But for this program, basically, you just take the two mice and you put it in and basically it registers which one registers first and it tells you which one's gonna win by how many milliseconds. And then when I was doing this, I noticed there were some inconsistencies as I did this based on, you know, the distance of the click. Maybe I didn't hit one as well as the other. And so what I did was I, you know, hit this a lot of times, just basically pounding the shit out of my mice to the point where I found that 
it was averaging about this amount. And then I would take five hits, and as long as the difference wasn't more than one millisecond, I accepted those five hits as being the adequate uh, difference when it comes to the input latency of the mice. So based on that, I added up those five numbers, divided by five to find the medium, and that's where I found these results, which you can see on the screen. So the fastest mouse that I currently have as far as having the lowest input latency was the Final Mouse 2016 Tournament Pro, and that's registered as zero because out of all the mice I have, there's nothing faster than that. And then every mouse after that, the higher the number, the worse, because that means that that mouse has more input latency than my Final Mouse Tournament Pro. So the worst mouse being the Myonix caster of like being what 14.16 milliseconds. That's how much input latency this had over my final mouse 2016 tournament pro. So the performance of the mouse, I think with this test has been proven that that is an adequate representation of the mice. And as I moved around the mice, like, I mean, I felt it like I felt that that was actually how much latency like I felt it was a little bit sluggish compared to the fi my final mouse and my final mouse for the past month has been the mouse that I've been using to game with so I feel that this test was you know very adequate in that regard so that's the performance test. All right, so now like the last section of the video as far as like you know final results and final opinions the best competitive first person shooter gaming mouse in my personal opinion and based on this test is the final mouse 2016 tournament pro and that is the best mouse because it is the highest performer where it has the lowest input latency it uh is very is the lightest mouse so you're able to whip it around just fine and you're able to control it very easily i feel the lighter the mouse the better it is when you're controlling and then the comfort level of the mouse it did not feel uncomfortable now it wasn't the most comfortable for me to use it wasn't the steel series rival 300 but it fell in the next category where the mouse was just a little bit small but felt very adequate and the final mouse 2016 tournament pro is adequate for me to use like it's the one i have been using for the past month based on all these facts and you know honestly the performance factor of where i figured out how like this program and i figured out how to do this test that was just like discovered four days ago and then i finally did the test and i'm finally confirmed that this is the best mouse if you're trying to play competitive games so if you're trying to play csgo or any sort of other competitive game out there the final mouse 2016 tournament pro is the mouse for you so that is what i would highly recommend out of all the mice i have that is the winner now if you disagree with me let me know in the comments below if you find that my tests were inadequate or if you have some gripes with me be sure to let me know in the description below but this by far is not you know it's not done yet because there are some flaws with the final mouse 2016 tournament pro that final mouse is coming out with new mice to rectify like some of the things that i kind of like found interesting that even though this polling rate of this mouse is 500 hertz where the Logitech G502 is a thousand hertz, the input latency of the final mouse was better than this mouse. So, I mean, that's just absolutely astounding. So polling rate doesn't really mean that much when it comes to a gaming mouse. I mean, it means to a certain point, but final mouse, what they did was limit the 3310 sensor to 500 hertz because they felt that was the best for the accuracy of that sensor specifically. And they spent a lot of time into that. But I know that Final Mouse is releasing their Scream 1 edition pretty soon where they're going to use a 3360 sensor, I believe, and that's able to get up to 1000 hertz. So I'm really excited to test that mouse out with the 2016 Final Mouse Tournament Pro. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's constantly upgrades, there's constantly coming out with new mice, and I'm not done with this yet. I haven't found my perfect mouse, I just found what's perfect for me right now. So if you're interested in this video, if you enjoy this video, let me know. If you're interested to see what my future mouse reviews will be, which will be a lot faster now that I've basically determined how I'm gonna test mice. And you know, with this with this video, with this like four month test, I finally got my opinions and my uh, opinions on mice kind of pretty much down where reviewing future products isn't gonna be that intensive for me anymore, where I'll basically be able to really get a feel for it very quickly just because I spent the time to learn about mice during these last four months, but anyways, that's it for the video. If you'd like to watch more, definitely subscribe. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.